Uh, I want to talk, I have like three videos that I want to do about phenomenology, and they come from this book, Herbert Spiegel, Spiegelberg's Doing Phenomenology. Um, this, this book is, you know, probably pretty expensive, you know, it's kind of worn down and everything, but it's kind of hard to get a hold of. Anyway, um, what I want to talk about in this video was, it was, was something he, that he talks about in one of the articles in, in this book. It talks about the human uses of, or the existential uses of phenomenology, or uh, he uh, or ex or the existential uses, as in the human uses, of phenomenology, and that primarily has to do with um, just like well, how can you know humans benefit from from this? You know, how can we how can we how can we benefit from it? Um, now, um, what he says, you know, he talks about. You know a lot of a lot of things in here. He in the in the in the article, yes, it's, it's called Ex existential uses of of phenomenology. And he do, he does talk about the various kinds of phenomenology. He talks about the <clears throat> the possibility of a unified concept, as well as a possible phenomenological way of life. Um, um, it must not be overlooked that 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 Husserl himself, during the later parts of his career, could not escape the challenge to his, who is to his enterprise and to his very existence that came from the from the political and moral crisis of the crises of the twentieth century, and particularly from Nazi's totalitarianism. He answered it by the plea that philosophy and specifically his own transcendental phenomenology had a mission in the service of mankind, and that this mission was the defense of a phenomenologically reconstituted reason against the rampant irrationalism of, of, of the time. Um, now I could go into the various, you know, the various things of the irrationalism of the time, you know, that, that, that kind of thing, you know, because there was various kinds of, you know, things, things like that. <clears throat> but primarily, I want to talk about, like, <clears throat> the possible uses of, of, phenomenology today. I mean, <clears throat> you know, when we, you know, um, formulate phenomenology into uh, a couple possible theoretical, uh, methodological declarative statements, and use that as the, 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 the theoretical foundation for, um, for other things, you know, for the application uh, towards, you know, politics, ethics. I mean, um, Werner Marx has already as well as Paul Ricoeur and uh, various others have, you know, done a, ph a phenomenological ethics. You know, that's that's a very awesome kind of thing. I think is you know to have a phenomenological ethics. I mean, that's great. Um, Werner Marx has two books that I like. One of them have the other one I don't. One is called "Is There a Measure on Earth?" and the other one is called "Towards a ph Phenomenological Phenomenological Ethics in the e Evils in the Life World." That one I have, and I love I love that book. But that, that book is very. Very resourceful, and I really do enjoy enjoy reading it. You know, you know and all of its concepts, the concepts of more of, of mortality and such, <clears throat> which I which I have talked about in, in various videos in my phenomenology playlist. But um, I want to think about you know at, um, possible a couple of possible methodologically declarative statements that phenomenology can be can be made into. I'm gonna I'm gonna have another video where I talk about. Phenomenology, possibly as a unified concept, if it if it can be if, if it can be done. But um, what would phenomenology be put into as me and what I mean what I mean by a methodologically declarative statement is like um, a statement made to be a basic belief, like you know if you read contemporary epistemology of foundationalism and coherentism, people who are coherentists are um. Or I mean, of knowledge, or not of truth, but of knowledge, uh, say that that say that say that, say that there are no basic beliefs that can stand without um, just without justification based on other beliefs. You know that that there. You know, and that if you are a foundationalist, um, you believe that there can be certain basic beliefs that 
can stand on their own without being, without having meta beliefs that will justify that one belief. You know that that a basic belief is one that doesn't need other meta beliefs to justify it. That it stands on on, on its own feet. Now, um, there is found here in Tism by Susan Hack, but that's that's different. <coughs> I mean, um. Essentially, what I want to talk about is you know a certain methodologically meth certain methodologically declared statement that would exist as a foundational belief, foundational basic belief that doesn't need um, doesn't need or or meta beliefs to justify. And I believe that phenomenology being put into you know few possible methodologically declared statements could be the basic the the real basic beliefs of this world that could be the only basic beliefs and phenomenology could you know make one a foundationalist in in itself um sorry i'm kind of kind of rambling here i have a lot of thought i'm kind of you know word vomit as you, you know say from that from that one from that one movie yeah yeah um okay so i i mean i've i've formulated you know at least four kind of possible methodologically declared statements that, that you can Turn phenomenology, phenomenology into, but I want to you know say one um, <clears throat> uh, that one of them, one of those methodologically declarative statements would be: we study the phenomenon of the given, or of the of the, of the given and of givenness, um, without without. Um, Without trying to, you know, uh, argue for the existence or not of these of these phenomena, and studying these this these these phenomena and the structures of these of these phenomena within givenness, and nothing more, um, you know. So, phenomenology would be characterized in in a few of these methodologically declarative statements as. Um, Studying that which presents itself in nothing more, um, you know, and that would mean, you know, not taking idealist positions or anti-realist positions or nihilist positions, or, um, or uh, realist 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 positions, idealist positions, or, or 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 anything like that. Just studying the phenomena, saying, say, studying the phenomena of this pen, you know, just studying certain certain phenomena. And if we're doing, you know, eidetic, eidetic phenomenology, we're, we're, we're doing we're doing one thing, just descriptive in another, um, constitutive another, hermeneutic another. You know, it it varies, but all of those things that Spiegelberg talks about in this in this one thing in his book, doing doing phenomenology, it's still we're still. It, all those, all those kinds of phenomenology, all still adhere to this one methodologically declarative statement that we all study the given, or we study givenness itself and all this, all of its phenomena and structures. Um, we study the given and givenness and nothing more at all. Um, and I think there's so much power to this one statement, you know, or to however way you could formulate this statement, because I think. I think that phenomenology, you know, can be put into a unified concept, but, I mean, and, and can be put into, you know, a few, like, maybe four methodologically, methodologically declarative statements, you know, that would serve to be applied to various, to various, various other things, you know, like politics, ethics, religion, you know, stuff, stuff like that, science as well, it has so many applications you know and it's just so endless because it but, but only if we use this state use one of these statements as a foundational belief you know that we can move move forward and do normative things with phenomenology itself and that and, and because of that i think that phenomenology has various human uses various existential uses um because you know we can uh, you know, because we can apply phenomenology to politics, uh, and thus we could possibly, you know, um, weaken ideology. You know, because we do have the liberal and the and the conservative. You know, the Democrat and the Republican. You know, ideologies, and I believe that 
the theoretical phenomenological statements um, applied normatively to politics could, and you know as well as you know social theory and um, ideology um, that that could very well weaken ideology and thus solve various problems in phenomenology. You know, and I could talk about this for a long time because I'm actually writing a manuscript about um, lots of this stuff. I have, a, I'm writing, I'm, I haven't really talked very much, very much about the manuscript that I am writing, but it's a manuscript that pretty much justifies phenomenology as the foundation for everything. It, my manuscript, my book, I guess that I'm writing, uh, is going to stick phenomenology in put that into various methodologically declared statements as the fa theoretical foundation and then use that to and apply that to normative things um, and the rest of the book beyond that you know mo most of the book most of the ma uh, most of the manuscript, manuscript anyway talks about how we can you know the various applications to ethics politics and religion as well as to um, things of like suffering and pain and and, and and nihilism even so um anyway and my book pretty much you know that i've been writing for like two years now and not even not even done with um that book or, or i mean that what i what i've been writing about kind of is my statement about how i think how i think that um phenomenology phenomenology has various existential uses um because it, you know, using phenomenology as a foundation, as a theoretical foundation being applied to other normative things, can help the world, I think. It can have lots of various uses to help the world and help humans. And help us not only to um, treat the world and all, and all of the, you know, lesser beings well, as well as treat ourselves well. Um, and you know, make a sort of, certain sort of harmony in the world, if you will. I mean, I, I can I can develop the word harmony into various other things, but I don't, I don't want to do that here. Um, yeah. So I think that you know, there's various human human uses for this. I mean, it's just so very so vast human human uses for this. Um, so yeah, let me let, let me know your thoughts if you, if you have any.